All right, so here are the air chemistry notes. Um, I'm gonna just start with a little description of air chemistry, what I mean by air chemistry. And that is that the study of the composition, behavior, and properties of air, okay? And changes in air. So basically all of those things are gonna be included in air chemistry and that's what this unit is. So we've taken some notes on physical states and now we're gonna go forward with air chemistry specifically. So we're looking at gases mostly for this unit, okay? So first, let's go ahead and define air because we know, we know what maybe what some of the pieces of air are, but we're gonna go ahead and define it a little bit more detailed. So it is a mixture of gases. Google's really smart here. A mixture of gases. It can be homogeneous or heterogeneous, okay? Depending on the sample size. It can be homogeneous or heterogeneous depending on the sample size. So when we have like a small sample, like our room or a, a bottle of air, it's gonna be very homogeneous. When you get bigger sample sizes, especially when you get clouds in there or smog, those are going to be heterogeneous because you have enough of a sample size to see variation in your mixture, okay? Now, composition of air Is, is pretty specific and pretty standard across the board, okay, no matter where you are. And obviously, if you're in a place with more pollutants, it's gonna be a little bit different, but it's 78.09% nitrogen, okay, 78.09% nitrogen. And then 20.95% oxygen. Okay, then we get to some really small percentages, and these ones are the ones that are more likely to be affected by pollutants or humidity, things like that. But 0.93% of air is argon, which is one of our noble gases. And then we have right now about 0.039%. 0.039% is carbon dioxide. Okay, so very, very, very tiny portion of our air. Now, humidity adds water to the air. Okay, and on average, water is about 0.4% of air, okay? At sea level, it's usually higher, it's usually about 1%, okay? And so the other amounts would kind of adjust downwards based on the amount of humidity. More humidity means the other amounts are all gonna adjust a little bit downwards to make room for that extra percentage. Okay, all right, now I wanna get into what air pressure is because this is gonna be needed for a lab activity that we're gonna be doing. So air pressure is the collisions of gas particles, the collisions of gas particles with the surface of an object. Collisions of gas particles with the surface of an object. Okay, so collisions. If you get one thing today, collisions are pressure. The more collisions there are, the more pressure there is, okay? So at sea level, I'm gonna go ahead and get a bullet here. Let's see, where are the bullets? Here they are, okay. So at sea level, it equals 14.7 PSI. Now PSI is pounds per square inch, okay? Pounds per square inch. So 14.7 pounds of pressure per square inch, okay? Square inch is like this big, an inch by an inch, okay? So if there's 14.7 pounds of pressure on every square inch of your skin when you're at sea level, you don't notice that because that's the kind of environment that we've grown up in, we're used to that, but there's 14.7 pounds of pressure from the air on every square inch of you when you're at sea level. Okay, so there's lots of things that affect air pressure. Altitude affects air pressure. Altitude affects air pressure, okay? Higher altitudes have lower air pressure. Higher altitudes have lower air pressure. 
because there is less air between us and outer space. If you've ever been to the bottom of a swimming pool, you know that as you get deeper, you get that pressure increase on your ears. It's really uncomfortable if you go to a really deep pool and go down, okay? It's the same thing in air. The shallower you are in air, the less pressure there is on you because air is putting weight on us just like water would. It's just in a slightly different way, okay? So just like going into a deep pool, if you're in deep air, that means that you're further away from outer space, there's more air on top of you, and that's gonna be more pressure, okay? Okay, other than altitude, humidity affects air pressure. Okay, higher humidity, higher humidity means more water in the air, and that means more collisions. If there's more particles in the air, more stuff is gonna collide, which means higher pressure, okay? More collisions, more pressure. All right, temperature affects air pressure. I'm gonna scroll down so you can see this. Okay, temperature affects air pressure. Higher temperatures, mean faster moving particles. And if things are moving faster, this makes them collide more. Okay, this makes them collide more, which means higher pressure. So remember, back up at the top of this little section here, air pressure is collisions. So if they collide more, that's higher pressure. If they're moving faster, they collide more, more pressure. Okay, all right, volume is our final one. Volume affects air pressure. Okay, I'm gonna say higher volume. So if you increase the size of your container, higher volume means more space for the particles to move. Are you more likely to bump into somebody in a crowded hallway or in an empty hallway? A more crowded hallway is gonna be more collisions between people, so a more crowded space would be more collisions for a gas. Well, this one is more space, okay? A bigger space means less collisions, fewer collisions. This will mean fewer collisions. And that means lower pressure. Okay, so fewer collisions is lower pressure, more collisions is higher pressure. So all four of these things are gonna be things that I'm gonna ask you about frequently about what's affecting air pressure as we do different things, okay? So get those notes copied and then um, keep them in a safe place, submit them as your assignment, and then we will see you in class and we'll be using these concepts um, when we get back together, okay? Thanks.